Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the recently released Azure Poly Fuga CM170 Magister. It is available on the in-game marketplace for $25. I believe it is exclusive to the marketplace but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, taking a look at it, it is a trainer from the 1950s, a jet trainer. It is still in use I believe for aerobatic purposes. Uh, it is reasonably fast, it has a never exceed speed of Mach 0.82. Um, so it's basically your typical little jet trainer. But it's got the distinctive V-tail, and of course 90, 1950s styling, and I like that. I sort of like vintage planes more. My general flight style, and this throws a lot of people off, is more like a 1920s pilot than anything else. Uh, I do enjoy that kind of flying, and yeah. Well, well, we'll just leave it at that. So we have these liveries, eight of them, uh, including that very eccentric tiger meat one. Uh, that That's one I'll never use over there, this uh, red, yellow, and blue one. Uh, but yeah, we'll just go with the typical French Air Force one there. And uh, interestingly, the center of gravity is out. I assume that we should not touch that. Uh, I'll just, uh, this is my first flight with it. And we are going to try it out uh, as default, but I'll not have a co-pilot because we seem to be overweight just a little bit. And, well, I'm lighter than that, so I'll just adjust that there. And, yeah, so it says CG out of limit, and we'll see how it performs like that. I assume that they set it to that negative 22 for a reason. So, yeah. I'm going to take a quick flight around some sites uh, close to the... French Alps here. Well, I think that might be... Is that in Switzerland? No, that's still the French Alps. Maybe... I, I can't really tell where the border of Italy is. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, it should be all in France. All right. So, yes, let's take a look at this and see how it goes. Okay, so inside the cockpit, it is, well, it is a very old jet trainer except for that pad there. Um, so... Well, this is how we do the enable colon dark. Uh, we've got the oxygen valve. Okay, the manual is downloadable at their website. Ah, and this uh, region here is where we close that. Okay, so we'll close that for now. I especially like planes where the instruments are in a different language. <laughs> I, I have a thing for that. And overall, stuff seems appropriately weathered. The seat looks good, and yeah, uh, looking back, it looks very nice. You can see the wing there. Everything looks very well done. So, yep, pleased so far with the texturing in here. That doesn't look like the most comfortable seat, but uh, yeah, I guess it's appropriate. Uh, all right, and outside, that wonderful V-tail. Many little details on it like the little handlebar sort of things on the nose are, are those like instrumentation but yeah very nice tags on there little things on the v-tails I get the feeling that the design of this is an interesting topic to get into. It's sort of got the wing is sort of tilted slightly downward. You take uh, well, it's mostly straight though. It's mostly straight. It's just giving somewhat of an impression, maybe because of the wing tip. Well, no, the landing gear is sort of like that though. All right. So that being the case, let's go back inside, and here we go. Oh, it started off with the parking brake off. Uh, it looks like yeah. Interesting sound. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of air around. It's got interesting stuff all over it. Like the tail wheel, but the tail wheel and then this sort of skid thing at the bottom. Not skid thing, a ventral fin. It's got a ventral fin. 
doesn't really have a red line that I can see, maybe on the outside. Oh, there's our GPS. Well, I haven't heard this sort of sound in a plane in flight sim so far, so. Okay, well, it's not showing me the lines, but we're head to this Mont Agui. Oh, I'm just gonna go full throttle and see what we can do. If I break the plane, I break the plane. Oh, that is sort of a yellow zone at 350. Which is pretty good, I mean, you know. You can get up to airliner speeds, basically, and this is a 1950s jet. I didn't actually put the Copot's mass in, they shouldn't have put the Copot, but anyway, that's a weird sin thing, isn't it? Oh, I think uh, it's that mountain there. Very distinctive. Mount Aigui. Aigui. I mean, it's a trainer. It's not meant to be difficult to fly, and it isn't. Oh, nice sort of mountain. Very distinctive indeed. I have not previously seen this in Flight Sim. We're taking a look at stuff I have not seen before. So, next up. Uh, I wish it would keep my actual flight path on here. It's it's decided only to show the very end of it on the map. But anyway, Lake Mon Montenard. Montenard. Not sure why a lake would be especially interesting, but we'll find out. Inside a cockpit, still super loud. We look back at the mountain. Oh, barely we've got a glimpse of that. Okay, let's just see outside. This is the lake. Apparently. I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to be looking at around here. Over to the left. Well, let's go over to the left. Maybe it's just the lake itself, but I mean, a lake is a lake, right? Maybe it's basically doing a loop of whatever it's supposed to be. I mean, it's not the most wonderful lake I've ever seen in Flight Sim, <laughs> so uh, maybe they did very good shorelines on it? I don't know. So next up, uh, Lake Sautet. Maybe I should skip the lakes. I, I don't understand the lakes particularly. Very prominent Mach meter there topping out at one. Let's actually see how slow we can go and it still be sort of okay to fly for sightseeing purposes. I think the location we want is actually higher up maybe. It's a sanctuary. Okay, uh, we made a little stalling beep at about 120. How well can it climb up here? Very good, actually. Oh, there's the sanctuary, I think. Is that? No, that's a bunch of trees. <laughs> oh, it'd be impressive if that was a sanctuary, wouldn't it be? I think it's on the... Oh, there it is. That's pretty good, too. It's sort of like a castle. Well, not really. It's that... I thought it was a wall, but that's not a wall. Okay, so that's a little sanctuary in the middle of the mountains. 
That's a monastery and a half kind of thing. You're pretty proud to be a monk in that place. Well, if it's this peak in front of us, uh, I think I like the other Mount Aigui better. Maybe we should have gone to La Pyramide first. Yeah. Okay, but La Tabor? Or La Tabor? Something down in this valley? It seems a little bit higher up. Don't tell me it's the mountain again. Uh, we gotta make the mountains uh, sight to see. They should be maybe having. Oh, now it's looking a little bit better. Jeez, it suddenly went from being icky to being nicer. I don't know. Maybe uh, some of the photo scenery wasn't clicking in or not downloading properly. Well now, now things look quite a bit different. Though still, I don't need... Oh wait, what's that? Ah, uh, no, those are just trees. Anyway, yeah. Mountains are mountains. Mountains are mountains, lakes are lakes. I'm not overly impressed, but at least it looks better now. Yeah, it looks like for some reason some of the photo scenery wasn't loading properly. Yeah, I mean, it looks like these are like standby textures and then there's probably a better set that isn't loading for whatever reason. So next, Grand Lac de Lafri. Well, that's a lake. Lac is lake. So, all right, we'll take a look, but I don't have too much hope for it to uh, as being especially magnificent. Well, this is Grand Lac de Lafri. It's a lake. Okay, and then we're headed up to Grenoble, and there's LFLG where I'll land. Yeah, I guess some of those mountains were like supposed to be photogrammetry mountains, but they weren't loading like the first mountain did. I think is what happened. Okay, well, it is all Grenoble, I think. Time to descend. Air brakes? Do we have air brakes? We do. We have those little things on the wing that sometimes the sportier, sportier private planes have too. Just wanted to see if that was a special site that I had targeted or not. But it's tough to see anything in particular around here. We're pointed right at that point. There's that building over there. I think that must be what I was looking for. Is that a stadium? I mean, that's certainly a distinctive building. That's definitely custom. Uh, it would seem so, but it doesn't seem to have any markings on the field to tell me what kind. Okay. So, LFLG. I want to take a look at the airfield first and then come around. Uh, it seems really snowy. It's not a very long airstrip. Man, I don't even see... Oh, there's some lights there. Uh, <laughs> they sure haven't kept the uh, snow off of that thing. Yeah, I guess the part with some pavement still slightly visible is the runway. All right. Okay. The white zone on the airspeed thing down there, I don't think is what I think the white zone ought to be. So, that mine gear down. Ah. Uh, Are we actually a tail dragger? No, there we go. <laughs> Going nose wheel, nose wheel, hello. 
Okay, that nose wheel takes an extra bit of time, huh? Or uh, maybe I was going too fast, I'm not sure. But, alright. But, I can't go too much slower than this, it's already feeling like it's stalling, so. Okay, yeah, well, I can't see a darn thing on, on the ground there. Oh, no, I, I can sort of see where the outline of the runway is now. Okay, uh, I don't know where the runway threshold is, though. And it's not a long runway. Okay, well, we're gonna try this. Oh, right there. Okay, alright, I'll take it. Hey, might have been better than some of my other landings. Alright. So, there you have it. The CM-170 Magister, the Fuga CM-170 Magister from Azure Poly. I mean, no complaints, as far as I can tell. So, with the snowy, semi-alpine terrain that we've got here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.